Hello, welcome to this episode of Hypnotist Bernie Six Four Session. Joining us today is Jen. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? So, Jen, uh, the last time you were here, when was that? It was uh, two thousand. Oh, it had to have been like maybe two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Oh yeah, it's been uh, it's been ten years. Yeah, yeah almost. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Jen was here ten years ago. Yeah, it was a uh, a long time ago. Back then, there were dinosaurs roaming around. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> the Fred Flintstone was <laughs> like a foot power car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was back in Prospect. It was different studio altogether. Yeah, yeah that's so, right. That's right. I and uh, but Jen doesn't style. look one day older than uh, the way the day we met. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's so um, try. what try. have you been up to lately? Uh, well, right now I'm a psychology major at UMass. Okay. And now I have uh, one more kid. Which than I which are UMass Law? Uh, UMass Law. Yeah, nice, I'm a psych nice. major there. Yep, with the criminology. Uh, it's uh, minor. close to the uh, New Hampshire border. Yeah, yeah, it is. Do you it go is. shopping across the border? Yeah, I do, I do, because it's you know tax free. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, well, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, they don't you don't pay sales tax in New Hampshire. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, like yeah, yeah. the people uh, jump over the border. To yeah, buy exactly. Yeah. They just do it just specifically for that reason. But there's a lot of good like outlets out there too, like the Merrimack outlet in New Hampshire. Oh yeah, in New Hampshire. Yeah, 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 and the famous New Hampshire liquor store. Yeah, exactly. People take a <laughs> well, that's take what a they're day all trip. Called. Yeah. They're all called oh, yeah, the that's... same thing. Right, right. They're all called the New Hampshire state. Is it like a state liquor store? It is. It's like um like a state law they can't no one can privately own a liquor store there okay so they are all just new well how are the prices state. there like are, are they like more attractive than massachusetts um i think so yeah i think so but i know like um taxes you know like real estate taxes are i think higher but a lot of stuff is cheaper but you know they make up for i think real estate taxes are oh yeah expensive there yeah yeah but i know like the other like areas or like you can get you know cheaper places to live and stuff like that okay yeah, you know. but i guess like you know the housing is not that more i think like massachusetts like i guess like the price is wicked expensive it's, yeah wicked oh, expensive yeah, it's wicked <laughs> expensive yeah that's yeah, how massachusetts <laughs> like, over here, yeah. it um, is expensive yeah. though i guess like this show is more than hypnosis right it's like a showcase of how people in new england actually talk yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what else have you been up to so so what, what got you into psychology how long have you been uh in, in the program oh well i've been i got my um associate degree last year mm -hmm. and then now i'm working towards my bachelor's and ultimately i would like to work towards my master's which nice. would be at salem state okay and um so that's my ultimate goal i'd like to help people um with substance abuse and domestic violence and things along those lines and um i got into it just from dealing with uh my pers own personal experiences and um dealing with um close people that are addicts and alcoholics okay. or that have been abused and um so it's just a combination of that that kind of got me into it my own life experiences that kind of uh compelled me to move forward with wanting to help people and being passionate about that subject and kind of just want to learn more about it more about like the mindset of just everything and everyone around me you know okay. what i mean like just kind of all that so so i guess um you were trying to specialize in like addiction yes 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 that, yep, that yep, yep 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 yeah. yeah exactly like uh anything like um you know like rehab detox recovery um even like something like um like a kind of life life coach or in like even domestic violence is important to me okay. like to help with you know and children of domestic violence like i Do, raised... is it like an internship program like is it like a, a practicing program or is it like a very like scholar um scientific program that you I would love to do something like that. I know there's all different types of classes and specific uh, okay. programs and you can get okay. into it's, certain it's, the I guess like a, what was the do there's so many different I know especially with the practicum masters. yeah yeah that's right the practicum yeah the yeah. clinical and the practicum right. I know in the master's program they, they have things like that and I know um, if you um, want something in particular if you specify something right. certain they have like certain seminars or certain practicums for for certain areas but you have to like speak talk it over with your advisor once you hit right. a certain amount of classes okay. and then you can kind of specialize in one particular area because they usually like you to specialize in a specific area right do you know what I mean? Right. So that's that's kind of like the area where I wanna where I wanna be in, right. like community involved and things okay. like that. You know what I mean? And and earlier, uh, you know, uh, we had a discussion at a very prestigious restaurant across oh, the yeah, street. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you were, you said you were you got into um, you were interested in in addiction because there are some 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 I guess like events and, and 
Some of your friends have uh, difficulty. Yeah, yeah. Like I've had. Um, Share a story with us. Yeah. Well, I've had um, friends and family members um, that have uh, struggled with addiction and alcoholism, right. and you know, you try so hard to help that person, but once it gets to um, it gets to a point where you have to let go of them. You know, okay. like they tell people in Al Anon, it gets okay. it gets the point if you try so hard, like you do everything to help them. You tell you us know. the background story first. Though. Um, well, uh, I know, uh, you know, a close friend of mine, um, she was struggling with, uh, you know, alcoholism and, and it's just that she, you know, she was, you know, sectioned and all of this stuff and just, uh, went through a lot of stuff with her family and, and basically, you know, people in her family, it's, they just give up. They just have to let mm -hmm. go because there's only so much you can do. You know what I mean? Even like with my ex, he was the same way. Like his family had him, uh, sectioned and he, you know, was through rehab and, um, sober houses and things along those lines. But there's only so much you can do. Like if a person doesn't want to be helped, okay. then it gets to that point where you just have to let them go and let them hit rock bottom. Okay. Um, so that they can come to the realization that, oh, well, I really need to be helped. Like, you know what I mean? But the person has to want to be helped. Okay. What, you know. what what was it that you did to? Uh, uh, I know I know you probably have done your best, but like what 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 was the things that you did to try to help your friend? Uh, well, I know with you know try to go to like AA meetings, try mm -hmm. to do this and that, and like I know with my ex in particular, I um, had got him certain you know therapists, psychiatrists, okay. I got him into detox, got him um, different doctors that can prescribe medications to help. And then, um, you know, you know, when his family had him sectioned, he was in rehabs, but there's only so much you can do, you know, like, you know, went to meetings and stuff like that to be support, you know, mm. to be as a support system. And, um, but when it comes to that breaking point that the person just doesn't want to be helped or they keep going back into the same cycle, it's like you get to a point where you almost have to cut that person off as much as you want to still be there for that person or remain in that person's life if they ever need you, but at the same time, you can't let them take you down with them. You can't let them, uh, like you were saying, you know, sink or swim. It's like you can't let them drown you with them. Like they're drowning and they want to pull you under right. with them, and right. you just can't. And also, you know, um, you, you're you playing the role. It's hard to play the role of a friend and a therapist at the same time. It is. It is. It really and, is. Uh, you know, you, you know, can only do so much because you try to be neutral. There are, friends, there are things that friends cannot do and there are things that therapists cannot do. You know, yeah, so. exactly. You and, have to want it. I mean, yeah. Even with therapy. You know what I mean? You have to want to be helped, want to take the advice, you know, because there's only so much you can do, you know. Yeah. But it's tough, you know, even when you're, even like we were talking about, um, uh, actually, you know, what's funny is, you know, how we were talking about the, the breakup that I recently went through and that's, they say that it affects your mind the same way as an addiction mm -hmm. withdrawal. Do you know that? I don't know if you've, uh, learned about that with their, with neuroscience, okay. but do you know, that's actually a fact they, they've proven in, in studies that, um, going through a breakup and going through a loss of a person, um, that grieving process, it's the same as, going through a withdrawal from a substance like okay. cocaine or whatever they say it actually has the same effects in your brain as if you were literally going through a withdrawal from an addiction okay. so that's why i was saying how tough it's been going through this okay. um and break up in particular you know okay well i guess like that's that's where we we're segueing into um what, what, <laughs> what was it that uh, would you like to work on tonight I oh, just want to remind uh, people who are watching here, uh, we have a luxury of a full hour um, to do our show. I know uh, in the past we only have 27 minutes, but uh, uh, thanks to CCTV and our programming coordinator, uh, starting this week, we have a full hour to do our show so uh, we can spend more time talking to our guests here. And uh, we will probably uh, do a background, uh, uh, we call it assessment, until you know, 8.37, 27, and then, uh, and then from 8.30, we will do the hypnosis parts. Um, so what would you like to work on tonight with um, hypnosis? I would say, I guess, along the same lines of uh, what we were talking about with addiction, the same thing that I would like to kind of get past my anxiety over this breakup that's kind of mm -hmm. taken a toll on me the last couple of months, even okay. though it was... Uh, 
a fairly short relationship. It was just the dynamic of it. I okay. think that was so upsetting to me that it just kind of um, triggered. Tell us the story from well, the beginning. Well, what happened you have was. Lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was um, there was this um, guy that I met on my birthday last year okay. right through friends we had mutual friends and things okay. like that and i was out celebrating my birthday and he had noticed me but i hadn't really noticed him uh very much but he had um pursued me through the course of like uh, through ways of social social media right um through a period of like seven months okay. and at the time i wasn't really ready to date and i didn't right. know if he was like what i was looking for or, you know what i mean or was my type um but and I wasn't really ready to open up to somebody in general at that mm -hmm. point because I was still kind of like getting over my my ex who put me through hell um, for five years. So I was kind of okay. getting through that. And so I was just kind of trying to focus on my schoolwork and my kids and just like hanging out with my friends and things like that. Just trying to maintain focus so I wouldn't have any like distractions to stress me out and make me anxious because that relationships right. can be stressful, you know, as okay. we know. Um, and so... I, seven months later, I finally gave in to meet with him and, you know, things like that. And, and we, we connected, we hit it off. I felt like, you know, a connection and, um, chemistry and things like that. And, you know, I thought he was a really sweet guy. And, um, even though he didn't have everything that I was looking for from somebody or from right. out of a relationship in general, I still decided to give him a chance because I thought, oh, maybe this guy will be, um, you know, would treat me better, would treat me better than like people that I normally go for would appreciate me because, you know, of the circumstances you figure like if somebody is, um, somebody that you normally wouldn't go for, you figure right. like, oh, well maybe this person will appreciate me or will really right. love me unconditionally or right. whatever it may be, you know? And it just happened to be that we turn out to almost be not as compatible as I had initially thought. And I okay. think obviously he felt the same and um, just not as compatible and not as, um, I don't know, not as deep a connection as I would have initially thought. Like it, right out of the gate, he like had thought he was in love with me and okay. wanted to marry me, wanted to move in together. But I think it was more of like an infatuation. But whereas I actually did get attached and did, okay. you know, fall for him in a sense, I get attached, you know, I got he grew on me and I really did fall for him. So it was, so it made it tough because he's actually the only person that I can honestly say that I loved that, that, that broke up with me. Right. Cause in my previous relationships where I had long relationships, right. you know, a lot longer than a five month okay. span, uh, you How know, long where, were your, the relationship before you had, um, uh, five years, Okay. My, well. you know, and then, um, and so, but I, I left that relationship, you know, because okay. of, again, because he was had addiction okay. problems and things like that. And so, um, so I didn't think that was good for my children, um, for obvious reasons. And so, so what happened was, um, I, this is the first person I've been in love with that has actually broken up with me. So I think it kind of triggered certain like, um, abandonment issues, rejection issues, like, you know, that really upset me because I had not expected that from him and I felt that he gave up very easily because he's kind of like an avoidant type of person where he kind of um runs away from conflict okay you know what I mean where kind of instead of resolving it he just walked away like he can't handle any conflict at all which is tough because in any relationship it's work it's work any relationship mm -hmm. is work and every relationship has a level of conflict um you know, so it's it's healthy to argue and resolve things and learn about each other. And it's, you know, it's normal to have a certain amount of arguments, maybe not every day, but it is normal to have some arguments. And But I feel like you have to really be willing to work through things with that person. You have to be on the same page. You both have to be equally invested. Um, you both have to be just equally have the uh, same amount of effort put in, like 50-50, compromise. Both have to be equally in love. And both really have to be uh, invested to make it work and to want to resolve those problems. Because if you go through an argument with somebody and they just give up, then you know, okay, then he must have not been that in love with me to begin with. Or he obviously wasn't as invested as me, as I was. Because there were times 
uh, towards the beginning stages of the relationship where I had uh, wanted to give up, you know, wanted to, uh, wasn't sure if that's what I wanted. So, but I, I didn't, you know what I mean? Because I was like, well, I'm going to still try and make this work because I just, if I care about okay. somebody, I try not to give up so easily. Okay. So let's yeah. talk about you now. Um, what, what is it that, um, so, so the breakup is over? It's over. We still okay. um, are trying to remain friends. Right. So, like, we want to work on you today. Um, how how do you feel about that? And what I guess like thoughts or emotions or, oh, or, or like lifestyle you would like to change about yourself? I analysis? think that as of where I stand right now, with how this has been affecting my life, mm -hmm. and um, it has completely, um, it's been a, quite a distraction. It's okay. been quite a distraction. So I feel like I've segued a bit. I feel like it's been kind of sidetracking me derailed me okay. in a sense where I want to get back on track to where I was before we were together so I want to get back to where I was like you know seven months ago you know what I'm saying like back where I was fine being single and, and being able to focus and do well in my schoolwork and do well um, focusing on my kids and my okay. eBay business and whatever else I have going on, my work. And I just so want to be like a benchmark and working out. Like I want to, I just want to relieve the anxiety okay. of the relationship. Oh, the well, okay. So this that is I the second on, time you used you know? the word anxiety. So what, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? Oh God, because I have like like you use the word, and then like how does that translate into like a I guess like emotion or stress or sensation? Stress. It okay, can ex cause... uh, expand on like what does the stress mean to you? Well, it just like it makes it more difficult for you to function as a human being, where you can't focus on things that are more important, like schoolwork and like your kids and like your work, where you, you know, can't sleep well, or you can't eat well, or like, you know, my appetite isn't 100% the same as it was two months ago. Or like, you know, for sleep, it's it's tough to like sleep well if you have when you're alone at night, and you have your thoughts running through your How head. would you know when you're not anxious? How would I know when I'm not anxious? Yeah. Oh my god, I, I have such high anxiety as it is. But um, how would I know when I'm not? Well, well, I like it when my mind is occupied, like if I'm exercising or if I'm really um, delving into my schoolwork. If I'm like, if I'm really focused on something and okay. and I'm able to focus on it. So so you know, but I let's say like to tomorrow. Um, what would it? If if let's say tomorrow you can have a like a window with absolutely no anxiety, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> what would happen in that? Let's let's you know keep it like in a three hour window, yeah, where there's nice. no anxiety. That would be awesome. What 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 would you do, and, and how will we know that that you know it it materialized? What so so I like do? if you can do that three hours tomorrow, that is anxiety free, and and do what you're about to tell me to do, that you'll do then it will mean that you you are able to do that and you can prove to yourself that you it's, it will be like a, a a way for you to prove to yourself that you are you have everything that you need to go over this hump i guess that's what i need to do i need to be able to like not have the temptation to contact this person that has clearly made the decision about okay. what you know what I mean about what he wants and I would like to spend how, how often do you think about contacting oh god <laughs> every day of course but I mean you know sometimes he does contact me too but but every day I mean we really haven't lost touch since the breakup at all there really has not really been much disconnect has been maybe what, what would you like to say to him like right now if you said you want to contact him right? um if I had to contact him like right now, I mean, I've talked to him recently, you know, but I would, I mean, I've said pretty much everything I've needed to say to him. Just he knows how I feel about him. He knows that I love him. He knows that I miss him. He knows that I would want to give the relationship another try. He knows that I... Is that what you really want? I mean, see, that's the thing. Like, I feel that he just gave up too easily. But at the same time, when I when I think back... I think to myself, like, well, I wasn't really 100% happy. So, like, maybe he's right. You know what I mean? And, uh, like, I I feel that our arguments stemmed a lot from um, not, well, I mean, a part of, some of them were part of, 
partly from my unhappiness, you know, and reaching out. And I felt like a little bit of a disconnect. And then, like, there were a few lies that I caught him in, like minor things, you know, but there were a few lies that he got What would he about. have to say to you for you to... For first of all, you, did you want this to be over? I don't really want it to be over, but at the same time, I, I don't really have a say in the matter, okay. you know, and, and, at the, and at the same time, even if we got back together, would I be happy? Is this really what I want? Is this really what I'm looking for? He doesn't exactly have everything that I'm looking for at this stage in the game, you know, and at this stage in my life. So, um, is that, would I be happy in, even if we did get back together? Or would I end up breaking up with him six months from now? Like if we did get okay. back together and then if we got into another argument in two weeks, well, so, would he so, break up okay, with me again? So, so those, those thoughts are, are in itself, you know, not unusual, but those thoughts are, are in your way from, I guess, like performing your daily task. And, and you, you are, now I don't want to put, put this and you can disagree with me if you want, but, uh, but, uh, uh, well, first of all, this is taking up more mental resources than, oh, yeah, than, absolutely. than is necessary. It's draining. And, it's draining. and you're also trying to stop this from happening. I would love to for that to and, stop. And, and the way you, you try to resist these natural thoughts are also draining. It's very draining. So, it's like, it's difficult. draining it's that you're thinking about it. It's also more draining to it not is. think about it. It is. It is. It's very right. hard. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge. And it's... A challenge because maybe you could like dedicate like fifteen minutes a day to think about it. Yeah, I really and then should. after that, you don't think about it. You do other things because you have already That's thought about it, right? Too. Yeah, I've thought uh, about it. You thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've thought about it. And and well, the thing is, like, I got a feeling that you know everything that you can think of has already thought of before, right? And you're just kind of like repeating. Yeah, exactly. It's repetitive. It's the same thing over yeah. and over and over again. We've discussed and, the same uh, thing over and over. It's just well, the, it's very repetitive. Well, this is just my philosophy of approaching these kind of things. It's not to uh, try to extinguish these thoughts. Right. Um, if you make an effort into this, you will just keep... In in my experience, it, it would just... <laughs> well, I won't say disappointed, but it would just keep keep the cycle... The thought cycle. Now, I'm not commenting on I the came, relationship. Yeah. Right. I'm just commenting on on um, you wishing to spend more time, mm -hmm. I guess, on your schoolwork. Yes, and other things okay. that I should be focusing, like you said. And once you start focusing on other things, mm -hmm. and once you start moving towards, um, you know, moving on with your life, right. then these thoughts will, in my experience, will start to dissipate. And and then you have Time a choice. Now I don't want to tell you to what relationships you get into or not get into, right. but then you will make a clear choice and not have these thoughts push you around. You know. Well, that's the thing is I want to also take with me um, this uh, learning experience. I want right. to be able to take with me what I've what I. Do you ever write these things down? I do actually. I write okay. in a journal. I've been journaling since I was seven, so I actually okay. do write these things down. And I want to take with me this uh, learning experience. And you know, when every person that comes and right. goes in your life, you take a part of that person with you. You take a piece of that person with you throughout right. your life. And, and you learn from each experience, but I want to be able to learn from it and be able to learn from my mistakes from the relationship too, not, not just his, because right. obviously he had his faults and flaws as well, right. but we all do. You know what I mean? Right. We all can use self-improvement. But as you were saying, if I had three hours with no anxiety, I would like to spend, you know, a portion of that time focus on my schoolwork, a portion of that time maybe exercising and maybe like some meditation and a portion of that spending like time with my kids, like playing or took in the okay. park or painting with them. Those are the three things, the three um, facets I'd like to work on, you know? Okay. And so, so if there's a magic wand today, and I can like tap you on the shoulder with this magic wand, and and everything will come true. How how would you see yourself differently than um, I right would now? like to see myself. Um, I would like to really know my self worth more, not feel so, um, not have such a lack of confidence, and feel like unworthy of love because he broke up with me. I want to like know okay. my self worth, know that I should be giving my love to someone who is more deserving of of it or, or more compatible with me you know what i mean okay. like somebody who's 
more on my same wavelength, who's okay. looking for the same things. And there is somebody out there for everybody. And that person should accept your flaws regardless because we right. all have them. Right. You know what I mean? And, and like as, as I accepted his flaws and as I would accept anyone's flaws that I love, you know. And I think that's important. Like you have to be willing to work with somebody. And I have oh. to just know my self-worth, I think, more. Be more confident, okay. I guess I could say. Be more confident. Would you would you like to carry all that? Is is? I guess like it's, it's um I don't know if you can disagree with me, but it sounded like, you, on one hand you have thought this through very freely, but on the other hand this is also a, a burden of some sort. It is definitely a burden. It's like a cross to bear. It's a heavy. And and you wrote this thing down, right? Oh yeah, I, I constantly. So you don't have to think about it; it's already written down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is something like I have to, like I've been trying to listen to like positive affirmations and like motivational okay. videos just to try to like boost my confidence and understand my self worth and know that just because this relationship doesn't work out, it doesn't mean I'm like defective. You know okay. what I'm saying? So I kind of just need to kind of get that in my head. <laughs> so, so drill it in my head a bit, you know what I mean? I guess um the we're approaching eight twenty seven and uh we the station will break for three minutes and then uh we'll come back on the other side of the break and then we'll use hypnosis to help uh Jen to uh, help her achieve her goals. Okay. Right. Uh join me, see you in three minutes. Uh, hello, welcome back to this episode of our Hypnotist Bernie Six Procession. Um, yeah, so uh, we are back onto a new format uh, that got from, runs from 8 to 9. Mm -hmm. We just had a three-minute um, um, community service break. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for those of you who are just joining us on YouTube, it will be like nothing has happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so this is what we're doing, uh, I guess, in real time in the... In, in our station right here. Um, so Jen, it was actually a big star. And uh, <laughs> like uh, not too long ago, you were on. Dr. Phil. Dr. Yeah, Phil. Dr. Yeah, Phil. yeah. So tell us a little bit of the experience. <clears throat> well, my brother recently had a book published um, called The Shot Cross Letters. Uh, he recently had published with his co-author, Brian Whitney. And um, he was pen pals with a serial killer named Arthur Shawcross for two years. Okay. And they actually were in business together. But your brother's still alive. My brother's still okay. alive. Not the serial killer, though. He's not, yeah, no, my brother is. Yeah, <laughs> right. he's, okay. he's, he's back there okay. somewhere. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so they asked us to come on the show and, um, you know, discuss the... Um, uh, portions in the book also that had to do with my brother and his fascination with serial killers okay. and his certain um, urges when he was younger and his okay. certain, you know, obsessions with serial killers and these, you know, objects he used to sell like uh, murder, like uh, memorabilia, serial killer memorabilia on eBay. And that's how these two connected um, okay. because he had noticed. What, what's the serial Kill their memorabilia. Like just it would like, be. Did they have like rookie cards? Yeah, like it would be drawings and things okay. like that, or whatever they had. I used to sell like shrunken heads, like fake fake shrunken heads, and used okay. to sell like um. Serial you can sell killer. them on eBay. Yeah, seriously, they did. Yeah, for years he did that, and then they. Oh, did, <laughs> that's did, how they reached. never took it down. Like, no they way. did sometimes. Yeah, okay. they did. They okay. did. I think they're more strict about it now. Okay. But back then they weren't like ten years ago. Whatever. It was, okay. it was different, you know, and um. And now, so, are, are these are these like real items, or are they like? Yeah, like... no, these were authentic um, um, drawings and stuff from these serial killers and things like okay. that. And just other like uh, types. How, of... how did they find? How does your brother find these items? Um, I What's don't that? know how. I think he would come across a lot of these things okay. on eBay and and things like that and resell them or, or other but websites. But then, but then the the convicted killer does not have any pros. Cannot have any proceeds. Well, I think there was some uh, situation that they had going on where I think he was allowed to send him some portion of money from the profits. I think they had some kind of collaboration going on where okay. they, the serial killer, Arthur Shawcross, had reached out to him and said, um, had noticed that he was selling some of his things on eBay okay. and said that he basically wanted to be a part of it. And, um, and then they had talked about uh, writing a book together. They were in collaboration with a New York publishing company. Like how does the serial killer... 
Like, do they have eBay in prison? I think they do have access to internet there. They, they no, but must. like eBay, like, do they, they you buy they, things on they eBay? They must have access. Like, I, I, I and know, did they, they deliver it to prison? Access. Yeah, they must have access to it because I know they Like, can have, I call a pizza in They in, do have in, internet Can I call Domino's access. in prison? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I guess if you Like, does Amazon to... deliver? Like, yeah, exactly, drones? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's why it's weird. I, I mean, I think they must have, have access. But then he was, um, he reached out to them and, and uh, they ended up becoming pen pals because I guess he doesn't trust, you know, well, he didn't trust a lot of people to write back to. And then he was starting to send them, like, uh, like, like writing pen pals? Yeah, they wrote to each other but that's that's what these but letters... like this guy have the internet um well i mean he he must have had access to some kind of internet but they actually but then wrote they wrote physical letters okay. and that's what the name of the book is the shaw cross letters okay that's like they wrote physical that's very letters. interesting we, we need to invite uh the, the young man over definitely i'm the one who I, point, yeah. I actually gave him the idea i said people love true crime stuff i said right, yeah. you know you want to write a book why don't you write about the correspondence between yourself and arthur shaw cross all right Wouldn't yeah so i guess idea? like uh, join us next week when this show get really crazy yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Phil, well, it's supposed to air August 27th. Right. Okay. So, yeah. For those of you who don't know, I have this obsession of beating Dr. Phil to his topics. <laughs> Even though nobody watch my show, but I like to, uh, I like to publish, like, I like to, like, put out, like, things before Dr. Phil did. Exactly. But in any case, you know, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a fine man and, uh, and uh, he's an inspiration. He was know, very yeah. professional. Yeah, very, he was. Yeah, how, how was he? Uh, he was very, uh, person, very uh, professional. He was a lot less intimidating than I thought. I was very okay. scared. Was he really tall very, in person? He is. He yeah, is fairly okay. tall, but he was um, very, you know, it's it, it was intimidating, you know, because he, he's so like, Can you understand what he's saying? Does yeah. He have, like a lot of like... Uh... Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. he's, he's pretty straightforward, pretty professional and and a lot less intimidating than I thought. But was there like a huge audience that you have to sit in front of? It was um, a, a, just like a normal, decent sized audience, not overwhelmingly intimidating. Like okay. I've been in front of bigger audiences when I did, um, when I participated in pageants. I've participated okay. in several pageants. Okay. So I was in front of really large audiences especially do, do they react to, to things you say they do okay. they do react yeah they definitely do so it's kind of funny to okay <laughs> you know sometimes because they were in a way that's like easier to have like some kind of like a it's like a gauge on, on how it you do it. It is, it is. I think so. I think yeah. so. They were a little appalled by some of the things my brother was saying. Okay. But, uh, but you know, because they had the serial killer's daughter there, Maggie. She was okay. nice, yep. And then they had a, a um, on Skype a, one of the victim's uh, sisters on Skype. Okay. So it was interesting because those two were kind of surprise guests. They took us by surprise. Okay. So I didn't expect that because they basically said the would not really be many surprises in regards to what right, we were yeah. going to discuss, but it's just a minor surprise. It's not like a, a minor surprise. surprise. Yeah, yeah, it's okay because we made it's it. Not like Santa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, was, it wasn't bad because it went well. Everybody was yeah. very like professional okay. and like you know That's I good. think we composed ourselves very well. But yeah, it is That's supposed good. to. Yeah. Air yeah, the end of August, so that yeah, should so, be interesting. Yeah, so with a legitimate psychology star, yeah, yeah <laughs> in our exactly. studio yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> well, in any case, this is a hypnosis show. Let's let's do uh, um, yeah. some hypnosis here. So uh, cool. let's let's review a little bit. So like, um, in in simple in simple terms, right? Like, uh, if if everything could happen in this hypnosis session that goes perfectly, mm -hmm. how would you be different tomorrow than from today? In terms, I guess like I guess we could just focus on anxiety. Yes, that yes. will be the operative word here. I think so. I think that's the main word. That's the major stressor. Okay. So if we could kind of relieve some of my um, anxiousness in general, what would be the opposite of, of anxiety in in your mind? Um, ease of mind, peace of mind, something to bring me at a place where I can be. Um, Do you have any schoolwork outstanding? I am behind on a couple of assignments because okay, of so, this. Okay, so, so if, I, if we can pick, what what would be like a good like three hour block for you to like take care of some of the the paperwork? I think um, I think at this point I need to reach a level of acceptance. I need to be able to be at ease. Okay, okay. Let, let's no. Um, we want to test this in real time, right? So if you can take a block of time tomorrow and, and oh, like a specific time yeah. frame. Oh, so that way we can test how how far you. I would you say like twelve to move. three. 12 to Tomorrow. 3, okay. Yeah, while the kids are and, in and, school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then three. we can take this block of time and, and, and um, so I don't know your, your workload, but like, what would be like one thing that you have to do? One thing I would have to do is um, my 
you know, my psychology quiz, my Spanish quiz, um, you know, I have discussion posts to do, um, okay. and, you know, reflection questions, reading. Okay, so, so I guess, like, you got to organize is also a big thing. Yeah. Yes, yes. Just having a peace of mind yes, doesn't, doesn't yes, get you very yeah, far. Yeah, so, yeah. like, but, like, you, you, seem, you seem like a star yeah. student, so you can... Uh, um, at least, like, take like the first like fifteen minutes to to get all your ducks in a row, and, right? Uh, yeah. And then and then you know knock out a few of the items. So, you know, you may or may not finish everything, but uh, right. But this is more. It's not like a, a test. It's not a test of your academic ability, but right. But you know, see if you can focus enough to take care of the task. So from from noon to three, right. uh, we will have this zone set up just to, to. But and once you're able to do that, you can. It's proven to yourself that you can do that. You can just right. expand on on that feeling and uh, and and work towards uh, you know um, what you wish. So I guess like today, uh, once again, uh, we are not trying to make you uh, forget anybody or get over anything. Mm -hmm. It's just to to you know uh, help you uh, work better, and cope with it better, be more peace, yeah, accept be it. more at peace. Yeah, and then you still you can still think about whatever you want to think about. Yeah. And and if that's your hobby, you know, go. <laughs> but like you know, it's just like any hobby, you know. You know, it's like a, yeah, exactly. be, be sensible. You know, watch yeah. an hour Everything TV. In moderation, watch an you know? hour. Yeah, moderation. Baby steps, yeah. Baby like an hour steps. TV is good. Eight hour TV is not good. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Okay, so we just like you know, think unhealthy. about your 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 ex will be like watching TV. You know? it's yeah. like, sounds like something you want you enjoy doing. Right. But don't do it all day long. You know. Right. Exactly. Um, all right. So I'm just checking the clock here. Um, so you've never been hypnotized before? Well, no, not other than when <laughs> I was just, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> We've never met before, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uncross your legs, please. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. Can you? Okay, you can rest your leg on the. Uh, oh. Am on, I doing that? Okay, that's 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 good. That's good. You can just leave it like that. Yeah. Like this. All right. Um, I want you to hold out your hands like this, mm -hmm. and uh, can I touch you? Yep. I want you to. Focus your attention here mm -hmm. and here. Mm -hmm. And I want you to imagine that there's a magnet in between your palm. And it's attracting magnets that is slowly pulling your palm closer and closer and closer together. Now I want you to just stare in right through your palm and into the finest spot on the wall over there. And just mm -hmm. focus all your attention on the spot while your the magnets in your inside your hand are getting stronger. And stronger and stronger. That's right. It would just happen naturally mm -hmm. and easily. That's right. Yeah. Now I just want you to push your palm tight together. Feel this magnetic, magnetic force becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. I want you to lock your elbow here. I want you to lock your elbow here. That's right. Just push your hand all the way out in front of you. That's right. When I count to three, no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to pull your hands apart. One, two, three, try and you cannot. Try and you cannot. That's okay. Look up here. Look at the center of my palm right here. That's right. And it counts backwards from three to one. When you reach number one, I want you to close your eyes and let your mind drift again. Three, two, one. It's okay. Just let yourself go and sleep. That's right. Just relax. Relax your arm. Relax your wrist. That's right. Just relax. Relax your joints. Right here. That's right. Just relax. 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 Let go of all the tension that you're holding on in your joints right here. That's right. Just let it hang loose. Then and relax. You're still holding on to some tension here, don't you? Just relax. Relax all the tension here. Just let it hang there. That's right. Just let it hang. Loose, limp, relax. Loose, limp, and relax. Loose, limp, and relax. Just like a wet cloth right here. Just like a wet cloth right here. Loose, limp, and relax. That's right. Can you feel the tension in your joints right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, just let go of the tension right here. That's right. That's right. You don't have to put any force into it. That's right. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. That's right. 
That's right. Doesn't that feel more relaxed? It does. That's right. And you can feel the tension here right now, don't you? Mm -hmm. I just want you to just consciously let go, let go, let go. That's right. Doesn't that feel better? Mm -hmm. More relaxed now? So just relax your shoulder right here. That's right. Just use your unconscious mind to just let go. Let go and let go. Part of your mind is still trying to pull your shoulder together. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to do that. Your, your shoulder will still be there. It will still be together. That's right. Just let go. You don't have to consciously force your shoulder to be together. Just relax. Relax. Let go. Let go. Doesn't that feel better? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that feel more relaxed? It does. More free? Mm -hmm. Now just let go of the tension that you're holding on the joint here. Yes, that's right. You're still holding on to a little bit. Okay, you're still holding on to a little bit. You don't have to consciously move your muscle, okay? You just let it go. Let go of the control, that's right. Just trust me. That's right. There, doesn't that feel better? It does. And you don't have to control your muscles? It does. You can always have your control back. I'm not taking control away from you. You see, you're, you're still trying to move your muscles when you still have this ounce of energy that you're holding on there. Can you feel that? Yeah, I do. No. I'm very tense. Yes. Could you just uh, just try your best to just pretend that it is just very limp, like a rag doll, just like a puppet without mm -hmm. the string. Just imagine that for a second. You can go back to really controlling after the session. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But I just want to show you what it is like to to just be free from this, um, burden. I guess, yeah, that's a good word, this baggage that you're holding on. And, you know, once you know what it feels like to be free, then you can always revisit this. You have a choice to, to come back here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there. Okay. There you go. Did you feel that? Mm -hmm. when, I, when I release it, just, just let it swing, okay? It's not going to hurt you. Okay. There yeah. you go. Doesn't that feel better? It does. There you go. Okay, now yeah, now, now try to your fingers. Yeah, okay, just it. just relax your finger right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't just let it hang here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Just let it hang. Just let it hang. Just let it hang. <laughs> don't do anything. Okay. Okay, you're st you're still using your mind to controlling your finger. Just let the gravity do its work. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. There we go. There we go. There we go. Doesn't that feel better? It does. Doesn't that feel more free? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're still holding on. It's not right or wrong. I'm just showing you what it's like to be completely stress-free. It's just pretend you're in a flotation tank mm -hmm. and there's no gravity and everything could just drop. It's okay, I'm holding on to your wrist right here. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Doesn't it feel different from a minute ago? It does. I'm just showing you what it is like to just let go of all the tension. Still holding on a little bit here. Just let it swing all the way back. Yeah, there we go. Did you feel that? When I did. You just let it go and let it hang. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay, you don't have to do anything. I'm just testing how far you can. Uh, let go of your tension. 
Now this is what it feels like. Okay, just relax. This is what it feels like to just release all the tension, right? Chances is that your unconscious mind is holding on to a lot of uh, tension from a lot of things that you don't even know from before, right? Mm -hmm. So I I don't want to intrude, but I'm sure you know and your unconscious mind know that mm -hmm. you are holding on to a lot. Of course. I guess from relationship mm -hmm. or whatnot. You know, we don't have to get into that. That's, I want to respect your privacy. But this is how you let it go, okay? This is what it feels like to mm -hmm. let go. It needs to let go. I let go. This is what it feels like, okay? Without thinking about it. You don't have to think about this, okay? Mm -hmm. See, you, you don't need your brain to do this. Mm -hmm. You can use your other hand to do this, you know? You can get, get your friend to do this for you. You don't need your brain. Here. Doesn't that feel good? It does. Doesn't that feel um, less tense, I guess? It does. You should come to my house Like, like all your weight has been lifted from that joint. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now, don't control your muscles, okay? Mm -hmm. Just let it loose. Okay. Try this again. Just let it loose, okay? Whatever happens, happens, okay? Mm -hmm. Wherever your hand falls, you're going to fall. <laughs> you, you, we're not going to hurt you, okay? Okay, okay. ready? Three, two, one, let go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, let it go. Okay. There you go. Three, two, one, there you go. There we go, see? See how different that feels? It does. Than holding on to everything? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Just try this out. Just relax. Just let just let all the weight hang on to the my two fingers right here. Just hang all your weight there. There you go. Just let it hang. Just let it hang. Just let it hang. Doesn't that feel different? It does. Doesn't that feel different than holding on to everything? It does. Nothing bad is happening, right? No. The world is not over. No. <laughs> you don't have to have Complete control here. Right. But you know it's fine. Doesn't that feel different? It does. Doesn't that feel different? Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you what is how it feels, okay? Because I guess like it's hard to explain how it feels. And if you explain it and you just keep thinking about it and that makes it harder to relax. Right? There you go. Okay, hold. On. There you go. Let the hand. Let the hand. Just let the hand. Just put all your weight on my fingers, okay? Just put all your weight there. You don't have to control your arm. You don't have to control anything. If it's dropped, the worst, the, the biggest thing that's going to happen is going to hit your lap, okay? Mm -hmm. Nothing bad ever happens when your hand hits your lap. <laughs> Fly, sorry. Okay? Now, I just want you, okay, let go of all the control on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Let go of all the tension. Now, I just want you to just feel... I'm going to let you go and just let your hand drop, okay? You're holding on. Let it go. 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 At some point, I'm going to drop your arm. You don't know when. But you're going to let it drop, okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Doesn't that feel different? Mm -hmm. Doesn't, now that your body knows how it feels to actually relax and let go, okay? And I want you to... Now I'm going to touch your forehead right here. And I want you to focus all your attention on this spot right here. Mm -hmm. With your eyes closed, I just want you to just roll your eyes all the way up here. And just picture your forehead as a movie screen. That's right. With your attention, focus all the way to this spot right there. Just imagine yourself fully relaxed. That's right. Let it drop okay? Even more relaxed now. And just feel this free, flowing and hanging feeling throughout your body. And on this picture screen right on your forehead right here, I want you to imagine the most pleasant scenery. It could be a day on the beach or it could be a day at the park or 
somewhere by the lake or a place that you've never been before. And as you focus all your attention there and seeing all the vivid colors, hearing all the vivid sounds, that's right. And as you do, you just immerse your entire sensory um, experience in that movie scene. You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to ask why you're there. You don't need to know when you're leaving. Just be there. And as you do, I want you to just feel your entire body as relaxed as your hanging arm just a minute ago. Okay. If it is possible that you know your knees and your toes could just be held by I don't know somebody else or or by air or something. It's just like floating and just let go. That's right. And just feel a warm ray of light from the top of your head. Just flows all the way down your spine and into your legs. And everywhere you touch, you can experience that letting go feeling. That letting gravity take its course feeling that you experienced a minute ago. And whatever you, that you're holding on, we may have to talk about it, or maybe we may have not. Whatever that is you're holding on, you know, at some point in the past, it may have helped you. But right now, it's just baggage. Just feel all this baggage leaving your back as it dissipates into the atmosphere right now. It's kind of like a hiker having a backpack full of rocks. With each step that you take, just feel these rocks leaving your backpack. Just place it on the floor one by one. At some point, these objects may have some value to you, but right now they're just rocks. Say thank you and let it back into the universe. Let the rock burn. Go back to earth where it belongs. Now with each step that you take, you feel more and more free. That's right. With each step that you take, you feel lighter and lighter and lighter, as if your entire shoulders has been lifting by a dozens of balloons. And tomorrow, you'll find it a focused peace of mind time from noon to three. And at that point, you'll find yourself getting organized, getting focused on your schoolwork. You finish all the assignments and get everything, everything ready together. And as you finish all your assignments, you'll feel this sense of confidence, this sense of relief, this sense of, com of joy over overwhelming. And you'll feel confident that moving forward, you can tap into this source energy anytime you want and be focused on whatever you want to do. And whatever thoughts that may or may not disturb you, you can just leave it and go back to that later. If ever that is a thought that distracts you, you can just leave it and go back to it later. Good. And I'm going to count from 1 to 10. When I reach number 10, you can come back to this room feeling great, feeling fully refreshed. Feeling like you just left for the last 12 hours, fully energized. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Ten. Welcome back. Um, like so uh, that's all the time we have today. Um, I'm surprised that you can run out of time. <laughs> but you know, maybe come back in a few weeks and yes, uh, tell definitely. us how you're doing. Definitely, yes. Okay, Hello. thank you. Okay, we're after the show here with Jen. How are you doing? Good, I'm doing well. So um, very quickly, um, tell us, what is your experience of hypnosis today? I felt very um, relaxed, at ease. I wish that I could have you in my house every day to do that. <laughs> so I guess like if we do something different today. Um, we don't usually touch our patient that much or client that much. Oh, okay. But like, but do, do you feel? Do you understand what we're trying to do? I do. Okay. Yeah, it made me feel a lot more relaxed. Like I feel like I almost have fell you asleep. had this experience before? Um, not like that. No. Okay. Yeah.
Now, do you have like a better understanding of the word letting go? I do, and that's I kind of need to have that drilled in my head. So yeah. <laughs> now, do you understand like the opposite of anxiety? I do. Yeah. So right. maybe right. like in, a, the opposite, yeah. in a moment ago, like I found that you you think a lot yes. and you use your thinking to overcome your feeling. Yes. So do you do you see that how you can use your feeling, and you know, do you first of all can, can would you agree with me that you can literally get in touch with the feeling I think so yes. as you as you let go you can like feel uh, yes yes right. I do yep let go mm -hmm. yep well I guess like how do you describe your experience going in hypnosis today I would describe it as very um, inspiring uplifting relieving relaxing and I feel like hopeful okay hopeful and compared to 10 years ago I don't know if you remember is is, uh, is there any difference between your experience of hypnosis today? Then? Well, I think that ago? today it's um, a lot more impactful for me because of the circumstances and situation that I'm currently in. Okay. So it's very like uh, compelling and very impacts me in uh, a much more um, effective manner because of the fact that I've been going through so much Anxiety and so so many different scenarios um, as of recently that I feel that this is something that I really needed okay. today. Well, perfect. Um, we are literally running out of time here. Um, well, thank you, Jen, and hopefully we can have you back in a few weeks. And, yes. Uh, update us on your uh, progress. Definitely, definitely. Right, this is Jen, everybody. Thank you.